Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Coliseum. I'm whispering because I don't want to set off some kind of chain reaction down here in the mines. Okay, no, I can't contain myself any mother. I'm just a naturally loud person. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Coliseum. In the last episode, we took down Mir B here at Deep Coliseum. And in this episode, we are going to be continuing our challenge at Deep Coliseum. Now, I said that I'd be skipping over the remaining challenges, uh, which... Some of you didn't really like. Some of you were saying that I was being lazy or that I should at least make note of those battles and all that. So, yeah, it's just... The thing is, we already had a time in the series where I spent four episodes rematching the Cypher admins and I didn't want to have another point of us just doing that. So that was kind of my reasoning behind it. So, yeah. But I will, I will at least concede one thing. I should at least make note of those battles. I have already fought Dacium and Venus, but I have yet to fight Ayn. So what I'm thinking I'll do for this video is I'll show the battle with Ayn normally, though. But for Dacium and Venus, I'll just show their teams on screen right about now. So if you want, you can always just pause and look at what their teams are, should you need any help with them or know what to expect. But yes! Uh, now that we are done with that, how about I meet you guys up at the Battle with Ayn? I didn't sing it this time. You owe me big. Of course, there's probably some of you that are insane enough to want to hear me sing. You don't give up, do you? I'll make you atone for thwarting our shadow Pokemon Caper! I thought a Caper was a person that was like a criminal, not a plan, you know, because I think he's talking about the shadow Pokemon plan, but apparently not. Anyway. So, starting off with Gyarados, level 64, Intim Water Flying Type, Intimidate for the Ability, Hydro Pump, Thunder, Earthquake, and Rain Dance. I'm picking it up. Rhydon, level 63, Ground Rock Type, Lightning Rod for the Ability, so don't use Electric Attacks on that Gyarados. Rock Blast, Toxic, Earthquake, Protect. So, I kind of wish I started off with Marshall here, being perfectly honest with you, because Marshall would only be able to be hurt by that Earthquake coming from that Gyarados. And it would give me a huge edge over that Rhydon. So I think I'm going to throw Affection back into its Pokeball and go with uh, Marshall to start off. And I think I'm going to go for, um, uh, let's see, what do I want to do here? Could go for Reflect, I could go for Protect, or I could just flat out go for Psychic and hope to take out that Gyarados. I doubt I'll take it out entirely, but I could try. So let's give that, let's see, let's try. You know, trying never hurt anybody, well, unless you're doing something really dangerous, which... I might be doing something really dangerous. I don't know because the turn hasn't played out. And yay! It looks like I made a good prediction there. Okay, let's see. Psychic. How much damage are we doing? Level 62 versus level 64? Okay, we did about half its health. Not bad. It's doing rain dance. It's very odd because I thought for sure it was going to do earthquake right there, but okay. Um, I will gladly, graciously accept you powering up my surf with that rain and have Psycho finish off that Gyarados. Let's do it. So, let me just make sure I select it. Okay, good. I selected the right move. Let's do Psychic, and let's target Gyarados, and there we go. So, let's hope that this works. Oh, don't hang on with a sliver, please. Okay, good. So, what are you sending out now, huh? Took out one of your strongest Pokemon, actually, right off the bat. Let's see what we got now. We got Manectric, level 65, Electric type, Lightning Rod for the ability. So, once again, no electric attacks if you wanted to use them against that Gyarados, and he sent it out alongside it. Bite, Thunder, Toxic, Protect. That thing can be kind of tough. I'll say that much right now. His strategy, if you haven't guessed, still is no different. He likes doing Rain Dance and following it up with spamming Thunder like nuts. Once again, having Quagsire is wonderful, considering that your Surf gets powered up, and on top of that, you are immune to Thunder, and he also is packing Hydro Pump on that Gyarados, which you would get healed by should he attack you with it. So... Fantastic Pokemon to carry for this fight. Let's uh, go for Surf, and we'll do Psychic on that Crobat. He's doing an X speed. I'm very glad I attacked Crobat this turn. He's doing two X speeds. I would have gone for Earthquake, but I was uh, counting on his uh, Manectric doing Protect that turn, so that's why I chose not to do it. Either way, looks like we're having a really easy time taking out that Crobat. No problem at all. So we do that. We get some more experience. I'd like to get some levels. So that'd be really nice. Mantine or Mantine, whichever you prefer. It's had two official pronunciations, like I said before. Water Flying type, Swift Swim, so it gets its speed doubled while the rain's out. Rain Dance, Confuse Ray, Toxic, and Oddly Twister, so he's actually packing a ground type move. How, or ground type move. A dragon type move. How often do you see that in Pokemon Coliseum? They never pack dragon type moves. So, I'm very confused by his choice in moves, but hey, can't argue with originality. 
So, Psycho, I think, is going to get hit by Thunder right here. I hope it survives because it's got decent special defense. It does. Not bad. Not conf uh, not paralyzed, but I might be confused right here. Who is it targeting? Okay, Marshall. Um, I was kind of hoping you'd go for Marshall because I think I'd be hurting more if Psycho didn't get to attack this turn. So let's go for it. Let's do Psychic on that Mantine. It's got high special defense, but we were able to do a lot of damage to it. And let's see what Marshall's going to get to do right here. It hurts itself in confusion. Of course... The AI never hurts himself in confusion, but we always do. That's how it always is. Never any different, ever. For all time. I don't know about you guys, but I always... No! Just that. Okay. I uh, didn't see that one coming. Um, wow. Uh, see ya, Psycho. You were very valuable to this fight, but unfortunately, looks like you kind of won't be able to help us from here on out. Um, should I go for Affection? You know, I'll go for Munchkin because I kind of wanted to get some experience and I'm still pretty early in my team, having five of my team members left. So let's do this. Let's see how we can powerhouse our way through this. We'll do Intimidate to, well, it doesn't really have, I'm not really preventing a whole lot. I'm preventing Bite on Magnectric and that's really about it. I'm preventing, um, yeah, Dragon was special back then. Um, okay, that was odd. The game, like, hung there for a second. I was worried that it might have crashed again like it did before. Uh, let's go for Surf, and we will... I'll go for a return on that Mantine, because I want to take that thing out really quick. Doing Thunder, of course, on Granville, or Munchkin, or whichever you prefer, and I barely hang on. Rain Dance, okay, so we're not taking damage. I really, really want to be able to take this out, because... I'll say this straight up. Every battle being a double battle, it forces you to be really strategic in this game. Plus... The fights in this game are really over-leveled. Like, I feel like they really should be a couple levels weaker than what they actually are, like, at every fight. So you got to be really strategic, and you really have to think about every move that you're doing before you do it. Because, you know, some people might say that Pokemon is just, you know, using whatever attack is effective, and it doesn't take much thought. But double battles, you have so many more things to consider. You don't think that adding a Pokemon uh, to each side would really do that much. But when you actually have played it, it's nuts just how much it adds. But um, anyway... So we have a five against one fight against that Mantine. Hardly fair, huh? Well, I don't really have anything to do with Marshall, so I think I'm just going to spam my attacks from here on out. I know I was just saying that it's really strategic, but hey, one Pokemon against two. Why did you go for Marshall? Why didn't you attack Munchkin? Oh, wait, never mind. It attacks both opponents. Derp. <laughs> I don't usually say derp, but... Okay, that was kind of funny. I'm like, you idiot, why'd you do that? Oh, wait, it attacks both opponents. Okay. Uh... Let's see. I kind of want Walnut to get experience from this. What What's its experience looking like? Okay, it's pretty low. Uh, we'll go for affection then. Okay, I think that's probably the best way to go. So I got four members of my team to just beat up on this poor Mantine. This thing was a real Manta Ray. I don't think I could bring myself to do it because I love Rays. I, um... I don't know. Just Rays are like the coolest animal. And it's like they're aware that they're the coolest animal because they flaunt their... They flaunt just how pretty they are, like in nature, all the time. Like, I I've actually swum, uh, I actually swam near a ray a couple different times, um, and yeah, it's just they know they're the coolest freaking animal in existence. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know about you guys though, but I've always liked rays, and I like Mantine's design a lot because it obviously is a manta ray. So yeah, just do Shadow Ball, and we take out Mantine. Affection gets the final hit. Awesome. There it goes. In our experience, Marshall gets not quite a level. God dang it. All right, nine. Ugh, what unbelievable power. All right, so we've completed yet another challenge. So nothing left to do now but challenge this area a fifth time. As I said, you will get a fight with said Deep King. So we get TMO2 from this, which is... Oh, God. I know O1 is Focus Punch, but I forget what O2 is. Let's actually check here. Uh, Dragon Claw. Okay, so Dragon Titan move that you're probably not going to use. Uh, I'll show the prizes for the other uh, tournaments on screen, the two that I skipped over right now. But, yeah, that's about it. As you might have noticed, we got an email. After each challenge, we have received one email telling us new details about Deep King. I will go over them. This is Ned. I'm slowly get, I'm getting information about Deep King, but slowly. He does sound like an expert trainer, though. I wonder what kind of Pokemon he uses. So not, nothing new there. I've been getting more information about the trainer, Deep King. He apparently uses a Shadow Shuckle. He could be very tenacious. Okay. And then 
There's a rumor the Deep King has entered in the Knockout Turn to Deep Coliseum. Wes, you've got to enter too and show up his highness. Oh, I'll show up his... The high... I'll... Show up his highness by kicking him in the hyeniness. I don't know. Uh, I don't really know what I'm talking about anymore. But uh, I'm going to switch around my team a little bit. And in we go. So I will meet you guys at the challenge against the Deep King. At long last, we are here in the final round. God, this is taking like hours to get this far. Well, not hours, but like an hour and a half. Here we go! Battling against Agnol! Kiki! <laughs> you're challenging me! You don't know what you're in for! We got Deep King Agnol here! At long last, head of Deep Coliseum. Starting off Girafferig, normal psychic type. Uh, level six, level 68, normal psychic type. Early bird for the ability. Return, psychic light screen thunderbolt, as well as Kingdra, level 70. Water Dragon type, Swiss Swim for the ability. Hydra Pump, Dragon Breath, Ice Beam, and Attract. Luckily for you, he does not have anything on his team that has Rain Dance, so you don't have to worry about that Kingdra's ability. What you do have to worry about, though, is the fact that that Kingdra is really freaking powerful and is only weak to Dragon type moves. You just got a Dragon Claw TM, so that could be kind of useful. Uh, it only has Hydra Pump, so you know what? I think I'm going to hold out. Uh, on switching giraffe rig out, so, or switching giraffe rig out, switching Corona out and attack that giraffe rig. And oh god, oh god, oh god, no, it actually did hit! Crap! I'm going down. Yeah, I had no chance of surviving that. It's 13 levels higher than me, and yeah. That was pretty freaking terrible to start off this fight. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's go for Psycho. It's really all I can think about. Um,. I could have gone for Marshall, hoping to, I don't know, do something. I probably should have switched out to Marshall to make that Hydra Pump useless, though, but I didn't think it would actually hit. I was counting on it missing, you know, but of course, AI never misses. Misses are for, y you know what the AI is like, <laughs> missing's for human players. That's what it's doing. It's like laughing in my face and being like, missing's for human players. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we'll do, I'm not too worried about Giraffe, I'm more so worried about Kingdra. We'll focus our efforts on that Kingdra and hopefully do some serious damage to it with Psychic right here. Let's see. Don't quite take it out, unfortunately. It's doing Dragon Breath. That has a chance of paralyzing, so that's also pretty dangerous, because, of course, when the AI does it, it seems to always paralyze, or, of course, there it could just KO Munchkin. So, um, in two turns, I have lost two of my Pokemon. That is not a good sign for what is to come here. Um go for affection. I can't affect that giraffe rig because it's part normal type. Actually, shoot, what should I go with? The thing is that Kingdra is hands down the strongest member of his team. If you can take down that Kingdra, this guy's really not that bad. Like, he's not all that tough if you can take out Kingdra. It's just that Kingdra is particularly brutal. The rest of his team's not all that hard. Uh, let me see here. I want to do... Do Earthquake, and we'll do another Psychic. He's probably going to full restore that Kingdra. No, he doesn't! Okay, I can take out Kingdra. All right. So let's hope that this is a sign of this battle turning around a bit. Who is he going to send out now? He's got some not too powerful Pokemon, but they got some good moves. Let's see here. He's sending out Skarmory. I was right. That's what I was thinking. Level 68, Steel Flying type. It looks kind of like 66, actually. Sturdy for its ability. It's no one-hit KO moves. I don't know why you'd use them. Steel Wing, Drill Pick, Sand Attack, and Return. Unfortunately, I do not have Corona still up for this. So I'm thinking, although some people might call this cheap. Actually, it is 66, not 68. That's odd. Um, I'm thinking about spending Marshall's turn revol reviving Corona. I don't like to use revives against the AI in battle, just because I feel it's kind of cheap because they can't do it, but I'm 13 levels under-leveled here on some of my Pokemon. I think it's kind of justified here. I'll do that for Marshall's turn, and then for Psycho's turn... For Psycho's turn... Uh, what do I want to do here? Psychic wouldn't have much damage on either of them, but... Even though it's going to get resisted, I think it would still more do more damage than return because Espeon's attack stat is really, really weak. I could go for Reflect. Um, shoot, what is it I want to do here? This is a tough decision. I'll go for Psychic on uh, Giraffe Rig. Some people might call this a stupid move, but I'm hoping that it does more than what Return... Wow, that did a lot of damage! I made the right choice! I don't think Return would have done even close to that much damage. 
I could be wrong, of course, but I don't think it would have. I don't really have the resource to do the damage calculation right here in my head, but um, I haven't really found Return to be all that useful, uh, even when it's my only option for doing normal damage. Let's uh, throw out Corona. Let's hope that that Skarmory isn't able to take out Corona. It's got Steel Wing. It's got Drill Peck, which would probably do the most damage. Drill Peck on who? Drill Peck on Corona. Oh, wow, I survived. Okay. I was thinking that would probably be the most damage it could do against Corona. Let's go ahead and do Flame Wheel on that Skarmory. And we'll do another Psychic on Giraffe Rig. Let's hope this works. Okay, so Psychic. We take out Giraffe Rig. No, no problem. Okay. I like Giraffe Rig. Its name is the same backwards as it is forwards. Palindrome. I like it. Anyway, let me see here. We got Sableye, level 69. <laughs> Dark Ghost type, meaning no weakness. Keen Eye for its ability. No accuracy loss. With the moves, Faint Attack, Shadow Ball, Aerialace, and Confuse Ray. I promise to never do that again. I will never use my Waka voice for my Okami Let's Play. Uh, unless a third Okami game gets made, in which case I would have to, because it would be, you know, against the law for me to not use my Waka voice. Anyway, uh, Shedinja, level 68, Bug Ghost type, Wonder Guard for the ability, meaning it's only hurt by attacks that are super effective against Shedinja. Silver Wind, Shadow Ball, Confuse Ray, and Dig. Um, if you don't have an attack that is super effective against Shedinja, you is stuck. Yeah. Shedinja's only way of KOing itself is to use struggle, because Shedinja, even though it only takes damage from super effective attacks, it has one HP. Always. No matter what you do, it has one HP. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do Protect, because I'm going to foresee that Sableye doing Shadow Ball, and Psycho really can't do anything with a Dark type on the field or with Shedinja on the field. So we'll do Protect. We'll use Flame Wheel, hopefully... Okay, good. I go first. We'll use that to take out that Shedinja. And there we go. Always has one HP, so that doesn't do a thing. I like the idea of Shedinja. It's so creepy. I like how it has like a halo over its head, and it's like the shell left behind when Ninkata's molt. Uh, or, uh, like, just like Cicada's do in real life. I don't know. I always like the idea of that. Anyway, his last Pokemon, Shadow Shuckle, level 45, Bug Rock type, sturdy for the ability. Shadow Rush, Encore, Rest, Bide. Shuckle is quite possibly the best mixed wall in the entire game. It has roughly 230 on both of its defense. However, it's strictly a wall. It is probably the only wall you're going to find anywhere in Colosseum that is better than Fortress. But this thing is strictly a wall. You can't do much else with it. Um, especially not in Generation 3. You get some better moves later on. But, for the time being, only use this if you want an amazing wall for these last few battles that you're going to be conducting in Colosseum. Because we're near the end of the game here, too, so keep that in mind. Uh, that being said, you'd think that level 45 would mean, oh, you're totally going to kill it no matter what. No. It's the most defensive Pokemon in the game. That being said, I'm going to do Return on it, which is a resisted attack. And even though I said Return doesn't do much earlier, I'd like you to see how much it does with a Pokemon that is almost 20 levels higher than it. Feast your eyes on Chuckles' defensive power. Yeah! Maxed out return, 102 power, 20 levels higher than it. Even though it was resisted, which, you know, obviously it was pretty clear it wasn't going to be doing much. Weren't expecting that, were you? Oh, God! Sableye's getting hit animations creepy, like how it crawls back with a <laughs> look on its face. Oh, God. And unfortunately for me, affection's gone down. Um, what else can I do here? I got Walnut still. Uh, what can I do here? This is actually looking kind of bad here because I'm down to just two Pokemon. Doing Shadow Rush. Its attack stat is garbage. As you saw there, I took five damage. I know that I'm a wall, but still, that's pretty pathetic. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go for... I could do Explosion Protect, but I think that might be a bit much and it might KO Shuckle. I don't think it will, but it might. So I'm not going to chance that. Let me, um... Hate to use another revive. I know that this might be seen as kind of cheap, but... Let's bring back Corona. Just because Walnut doesn't have much else to do in his turn. It's just kind of existing there to wall for the time being. Um, I can't do Return on Sableye. I can't do Psychic. Both would do zero damage. So I think I'm going to do Reflect right here to try to nullify that Shadow Ball. Just because I have nothing else. I have nothing better to do, really. I know people uh, kind of like that I'm being more tactical here. I know there's other people that think I use Protect too much or that I don't have a good enough reason to use Protect. But 
Welcome to having walls, and welcome to double battles where I have a lot of moves that hurt your opponent. I, I will say this, though. A lot of people really seem to want me to Let's Play XD, and I wouldn't be totally opposed to the idea. Like, a lot of people seem to want me to do XD instead of doing Platinum next. You know, it's chronologically the next game, but a lot of people said they weren't expecting to like Coliseum this much. And I'll, I'll say that I kind of agree with that, that I wasn't expecting to like Let's Play in Coliseum as much as I ended up doing, or as much as I ended up liking it. And for that reason, I wouldn't be so opposed to the idea, just saying. Not saying that I will do it soon, but that I wouldn't be opposed to the idea. And I have only kind of scratched the surface on the types of strategies you can do double battles. I mean, of course I showed Protect with Earthquake. Um, I showed the fact that you can use strictly walls in single player, like Fortress, which I would have never used Fortress in any other Let's Play of a Pokemon game. You know, anything that's single battles, I'd never use a Fortress because it'd drag on forever. But... Yeah, I just, for those reasons, I liked the fact that I was able to diversify my team more. Granted, I don't think it's the most powerful team that I've ever created in a Let's Play, but, you know, not bad. I don't think it is, at least. Um, we'll do, uh, I don't want to risk doing Psychic just in case it gets a critical, so I'm going to just keep chipping down Shuckle little by little, and I'll have Walnut do Protect right here. One, two, three... First ball caught it. Not hard at all, see? I think I made the right choice on who to use my Master Ball on. And we use Corona, we take it out. I did have to use two Revive, so I will concede that I was definitely under-leveled and that this, I needed more help from items in this fight than I did in others. But I still came out on top with two of my Pokemon remaining. One of which was almost at full health. I see. You are skilled. Congratulations, you are the champion. You battled fabulously. We get... Over $9,000 for that. Okay. I wasn't going to say it in the voice, because, you know, it's not 2002, or whenever that was popular. Actually, no. 2002? Sooner than that. It sure feels like that long ago, though. Oh, my God. Anyway, so we've done all that. But, after having taken out all the Cypher admins, as well as Agnol, the Deep King, believe it or not, there is actually still more for us to do. Yes, we are still not done with Pokemon Coliseum. There is even still more for us to do. Not much, mind you. We'll probably have this wrapped up in just a couple more bonus videos. But we're almost there. So next time on Pokemon Coliseum, we'll be returning to the surface and seeing what there is left for us to do in the Land of Ore. See you guys then.